Hey everybody, welcome back to Cityscape Brewing. I'm Dennis Fields, and today we're going to be making an ultra thialized hazy IPA using a couple of different methods that I haven't done before on this channel. I'm using an ultra thialized yeast from Omega called Heliogazer, that's OYL405. That strain of yeast is a bioengineered yeast that's going to help us unlock some thials, and we'll talk about that in a minute in our hazy IPA to give it that kind of juicy, juicy, hazy appearance and flavor that we're really looking for. Secondly, we're going to be doing a different method of hop utilization called dip hopping. So we'll also talk a little bit about that too. These two methods together will help this really become a, a juicy, hazy IPA and try to maximize the amount of flavor that we're getting while minimizing the amount of hops. So for a typical hazy IPA, you're gonna use quite a bit of hops. I've used uh, upwards of six, eight, or more ounces of hops for a hazy IPA to really get that juicy flavor. In this case, we're actually only using about four and a half total. That's throughout the entire mash, sparge, uh, and boil process, and that also includes dry hopping. So we're gonna go through both of those procedures, both the thialized portion of it and why thial is important. We're also gonna be talking about uh, the dip hopping procedure and how to do that as well. After you hit that like and subscribe button, grab yourself a beer and let's get after it. So first let's talk about thials in general. Hops have both free and bound thials already in them. Some are higher in free thiols like Citra, Simcoe, those kind of things. Those are a specific type um, that are free and organically flowing around. Another one are called bound thiols, right? And hops at high in bound thiols are Calypso, um, Saz, and Cascade, which we're actually going to be using Cascade in our recipe today. And we'll talk about how to unlock those thiols uh, in this process. And so those uh, are really more efficient early in the process where stuff like uh, the free thiols, like we talked about Citra and Simcoe, are better later on in the process. You can go down a rabbit hole talking about thiols, talking about uh, uh, different oils that are in each one of the hops and trying to guess which one is you know, better than another. I actually have kind of a few cheat sheets that I use when I'm making a hazy IPA specifically, and you can use it for other types of beers as well but specifically hazy IPAs where I want to utilize a specific oil found in each of the hops to say you want the mango flavor, a guava flavor, or some other type of uh, citrus flavor. Maybe you're going for earthy, maybe you're going for a piney taste. Well, those things are specifically because of the oil compounds found in the hops. And so I will, uh, for you guys, put this on the screen and I'll let you guys screenshot these so you can save them, put them on your phone, computer, what have you, and use them just as I have. Um, both of these charts kind of show each one of the more popular hop varieties and the amount of oil compounds in each of them. So the first chart shows the oil compounds all together versus the, you know, which type of hops that you're using, right? And this is important to try to mix and match those types of flavor compounds that you're going for. It also kind of shows the percentage of each uh, based on all of the oils that are in each of the hops. The second chart breaks them down specifically by each of the oil compounds. And so you'll be able to then look specifically at each of the hops to see how much in comparison to one another they have of that specific oil strain. So you can then take a couple of hops, put them together to create the flavors that you're going for in your beer. And I use this a lot in making hazy IPAs. Specifically, you're looking for, for this beer that we're doing today, the highly thialized ones, we're looking for a beer that is high in three mercaptohexanol. And that's short for three, or that's long for three MH. So we're just gonna call it three MH. It is very common for people making hazy IPA to look for the oil compounds, geranol and linenol, uh, in their oil compounds because those are the ones that give the citrusy, fruity uh, characters. But there are other hops uh, that have more or less of those specific compounds. So using this chart really helps. And then you can mix up some of the other ones in there as well uh, to determine which flavors that you're going for in your beer. So as we discussed before, Cascade is very high in the bound thiols, right? And so you can use them early in the uh, beer making process in order to free up those bound thiols in your beer. And the best way to do that is actually adding them to your mash. So that's what we're gonna be doing today. We're adding a, a, a one and a half 
ounces of Cascade directly into our mash to unlock those bound thiols. And that's what's gonna help our yeast, which is our Omega uh, Heliogazer, which is the bio uh, engineered yeast and give it that really, really fruity flavor without adding a whole bunch of hops. After that, we are not going to add any hops in our boil or in our whirlpool except for the dip hopping process that we're gonna talk about next. The reason is, is because those thiols, if you add vegetal matter, so the, the, basically the other breakdown, other than the oils in the uh, uh, hop themselves, if you add that vegetal matter, it helps shut those thiols back down. And so we want to keep them open. We want to keep them available for the yeast to, uh, to do its thing and make them uh, ultra hazy and delicious. And so we wanna limit the amount of vegetal matter that's in our beer. And so we're going to be doing some of that during our, um, our dry hopping, which also does affect it a little bit. But what helps is we're gonna be using cryo hops, right? So we're gonna be using both Amarillo and Mosaic cryo hops. These have less vegetal matter and more oils per ounce of hops. So think about using one ounce versus two ounces. That's about the same consistency, but you're gonna get less of the vegetal matter. So for our dry hopping process, we're really only gonna be using cryo hops and a little bit of Cascade. We're gonna put that in as well but we're gonna try and limit the amount of uh, vegetal matter after the mash. That's one of the more important points of uh, making this style of an ultra thylized hazy IPA. So we're gonna be using the Amarillo and the Cascade in our dry hopping process. That is only gonna be adding two ounces. Believe it or not, I've, I've dry hopped six ounces or more in a hazy IPA before. So you can see how much less we have to use. Therefore, we're gonna have a lot more uh, beer and a lot less loss because of the hop soaking up all of that uh, juice and it's less expensive. Also, uh, we're going to be using mosaic, and that mosaic hop is going to be also a, a, a cryo hop. We're gonna use that in our dip hopping process, and let's talk about that next. I like to think about it as kind of like making a hop tea, if you will. What you're gonna to wanna to do is find a container that can handle 180 degree water. We're gonna take a half a gallon that we would have normally put in our batch sparge process, and we're gonna take that out. After we get done heating it up for our batch sparge, I'm going to then take our uh, mosaic hops, I'm gonna put them in a paint strainer bag and I'm gonna soak them in there where I would normally do my whirlpool process. We wanna leave those in for about a half an hour. That's going to give us uh, a couple of things. It's gonna give us some bitterness because we're adding hops in hot water, right? Normally like we would do in a boil or in our whirlpool process anyway. It's gonna free up all of those uh, oils so we get them extracted to get them into the beer itself at the end of the day. And then we're going to uh, uh, pour or rack our beer on top of that hot water. And then we will make sure it's at the right temperature and pitch our yeast. And this yeast specifically wants to be uh, between uh, 64 and 74 uh, temperature range. We're gonna opt to go right in the middle of that. So I wanna hit about 67, 68 degrees. That will help us um, kind of make sure that if it fluctuates, it doesn't go uh, over or below that uh, preferred temperature range, right? So with that said, let's get after it. We're gonna make this beer. We're gonna go through the, the beer brewing process pretty quickly, but I'm gonna highlight the areas that we talked about already, adding the mash hops, uh, doing the uh, dip hopping, and then the uh, pitching of the yeast. We're also going to be uh, talking a little bit about the dry hopping procedure, where we're using uh, sous vide uh, magnets on the inside of our fermenter. These types of hazy IPAs, or this one in particular, where they have those free thiols, those are very, very susceptible to oxidation. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our, our dry hopping bag, we're actually gonna magnet it on the outside of our fermenter and keep it up there. And then when we need to dry hop, we're just gonna pull the magnet off and it'll drop down to the bottom and uh, then it will help us uh, get those oils out without uh, having any oxidation. We're also gonna be using our cold crash protector. That's gonna prevent oxidation and uh, help us during our cold crash process. Real quickly, I'm gonna have uh, go through this recipe with you guys. I'm also gonna have this entire thing listed in the uh, video description below. So if you have any questions about what we talked about today, it will be down there underneath this video. Go ahead and click the little more there. You'll see the write-up uh, with the entire recipe there as well. So very quickly for grains, we have uh, two row. We have nine pounds of that. We have white wheat, two pounds. We have 2.1 pounds of flaked oats tip. 
just buy it at the grocery store. This is exactly 2.1 pounds or 46 or 42 ounces. So I'm gonna pour this whole thing in there. This also helps with the haziness, but also more so for the mouth feel, right? And so the, the oats are very important for that. So is the white wheat that we have in there. I'm using a half pound of honey malt just because I love honey malt and it's good to help add some sweetness to this beer as well, given uh, kind of enhancing the juicy flavor. And then I'm adding a half a pound of acidulated malt and acidulated malt um, is really just helped uh, help to get that pH lower during our mash process, you can use lactic acid for that. So if you don't have acidulated malt uh, or you can't get it very easily, go ahead and use the water calculator to add uh, lactic acid. Make sure your pH is in that specific range. If you haven't watched the video on uh, pH and water chemistry, I will link that in the video description as well below. That's very important, especially for these types of beers. Um, in addition, you're gonna wanna make sure that we have uh, both calcium chloride, gypsum, and rice hulls uh, on hand. Um, this one uses more gypsum than we would normally use in um, uh, a beer, especially for my water profile. And so it's gonna be different for everybody, but uh, in general, you wanna have a higher gypsum level uh, in this one than you normally would for other beers. So we'll be adding gypsum, calcium chloride, and Epsom salt. We're also gonna be adding some ascorbic acid. And ascorbic acid in itself will help preserve the beer make it so it's less susceptible to oxidation and it will help preserve it while it's in the keg. Hazy IPAs in general, their shelf life is a little bit reduced than uh, compared to other beers. And so ascorbic acid will help that. And that is essentially just vitamin C. And so I'll show you when I add that, we're also doing that in the mash itself. Um, and then also, I can't stress this enough, use rice hulls. We're going to be doing a lot of oats and white wheat in this, and you can get a stuck sparge very, very, very easily. So make sure you're using that in your mash. We're going to be uh, adding cascade pellets in our mash, like we talked about, that's an ounce and a half. We're gonna be using that mosaic and our dip hopping procedure, and then an ounce of Cascade and an ounce of the Cryo Amarillo uh, in our dry hopping. So again, I'll have all of this in the link description below. Let's grab a beer and let's get after it. Thanks for watching my video. I really do appreciate it. Another couple ways that you can help support the channel is by hitting that like and subscribe button. You can also check out the merchandise in our store. I have other shirts. We got glassware, we got stickers, hats, sweatshirts, etc. Go check it out. Also, hit that video here. You know you want to.